Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And friends, we are starting to see the heat fire up inside of Israel with Gaza. Gaza provoking uh, an incident with Israel. And of course, we are always interested in just trying to point out the facts of what's going on. Not interested in sugarcoating things, but uh, uh, according to Arut Shiva, says a very serious attack. Islamic Jihad pound IDF positions with mortar fire, prompting airstrike tank fire in response. This is just the beginning. And of course, there's been a lot of tensions ever since Israel collapsed one of their tunnels that they were digging to get inside of Israel. Uh, and, you know, it's just tit for tat, but the problem is you can't expect the people, Hamas uh, militant groups that are inside of Gaza cannot expect uh, Israel to, to be able to work together as long as you keep digging terror tunnels in order to try to attack civilians inside of the population. And unfortunately, uh, even when Israel has to retaliate against these militant groups, there are civilian casualties as well. And of course, any war is a tragedy, regardless of which side it is. And that's my, des my concern as well. I care about uh, life period, whether it be uh, uh, Israeli life or Palestinian life, or in this case here, the residents of Gaza, it does matter. And so somewhere, somebody's got to take a step forward and stop uh, the antagonism and try to sit down and bring about some kind of peace within the nation there. I mean, how are we ever going to get to a millennial reign as long as we're in this kind of condition? Truly, as we see biblically, it has to be the coming of the Mashiach, the only one that can really bring about a lasting peace. And no, it's not the Pope of Rome. He's definitely not going to bring about peace as the Vatican continues to war throughout the Middle East, seeing if they can't take over the ancient biblical uh, land that was promised to the children of Israel uh, under Moses, where God says to, or even to Abraham, where God says to Abraham, I've given you this land from the Euphrates River all the way over to the Nile River in Egypt. Uh, but if you notice though, Abraham never went about killing all of his, uh, his, his uh, particular people or the people that were living in the land. He wasn't going about killing everybody. And in fact, the only time we ever see this was under, uh, under the hand of Joshua when Joshua comes in at the command of Moses. And that was because the Nephilim had inbred amongst the Philistines and uh, the different, the, the Perzites, the Hivites, and the, and, and the Jebusites, etc., that were inside the land. Otherwise, Abraham was purchasing land uh, amongst the people that were living in there and living in peace. And this is really what it's going to have to come down to. Uh, but anyway, it says here, 12 mortar shells were fired at the engineering team which was carrying out work near the Gaza border fence. No injuries were reported, but the sudden attack prompted temporary shutdowns of the train system in the Ashkelon and Siderot. In response to the attack, Israeli air, uh, air fighters struck targets inside Gaza Strip. The IDF tanks units inside of Israel also opened fire on terrorist positions inside of Gaza. A total of four targets were hit during the IDF operation following the mortar attack. The IDF's chief spokesman, spokes, uh, spokesperson, Br uh, Brigadier General Ronin Manilis, claimed that the Islamic Jihad terrorist group was responsible for the mortar fire. Uh, going on into other news as well, uh, the U.S. should clean it's uh, uh, clean, uh, excuse me, come clean if it's looking for pretext to destroy North Korea. This is Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov uh, that has stated this here. Now, that's one of the most provocative statements thus far, but it's not just the, the, not the only thing he said there that really concerns me about what happens if the United States does a preemptive strike on North Korea. Watch what the, uh, what the Foreign Minister of Russia says here. Now, we'll read a little bit about what the article says here. The U.S. has been con uh, con uh, consciously provoking North Korea to take action, Russian Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov alleged after Pyongyang's latest ballistic missile test. Moscow suspects the U.S. wants a pretext to attack North Korea, he said. Uh, concerning on the latest developments, Lavrov said it seems that the U.S. wants North Korea to resume the test. Uh, the latest U.S. actions seem to be directed towards provoking Pyongyang and taking some rash action, he told journalists. Uh, on Thursday, the foreign minister called the missile test an adventure, but said that Washington has apparently been trying to goad North Korea leader Kim Jong-un into it. Uh, the Americans should start with explaining their uh, intentions to us all if they are really, uh, really looking for an excuse to destroy North Korea. As the U.S. envoy to the U.N. said at a Security Council meeting, let them spell out clearly 
and let the U.S. leadership confirm it. Then we will decide how to react, Lavrov said. That's the strongest words coming out of a top official from Russia that I have ever seen. And those words there clearly seem to define whether or not Russia would be willing to engage if North Korea is destroyed based on the reasoning behind the U.S. Uh, uh, the U.S. possible or alleged uh, response to the provocations by North Korea. Uh, granted, North Korea's actions are not uh, very helpful either, and I do agree with that. Uh, and at the same time, I'm wondering if what Foreign Minister Lavrov is speaking about is the constant military drills being done on North Korea's border, all the warships in the region there, is this the provocative actions that he is referring to? And of course, at the same time, the South Korean president, uh, Mr. Moon, is also very clear that he doesn't want no confrontation with North Korea and is trying to get even the United States to back down. Now, this is what's concerning because he's the guy that's supposed to be in partner. He's the one that the U.S. is supposed to be protecting as well as Japan and the region. But it's almost as if the administration is using, or maybe not the administration, maybe it's the deep state, uh, maybe this is why Obama is going to see uh, the president of China, Mr. Uh, uh, Xi Jinping, in his own meeting there, because I cannot help but wonder if Mr. Obama is not representing the deep state and their reasoning behind this and wanting to go to war. I uh, don't know, but President Trump has been very vocal about wanting to take them out because of the threat uh, they, uh, that uh, Kim Jong-un poses to the United States. Understandably, I understand that the threat is realistic. I still don't see where Kim Jong-un is willing to do it unless he is kind of pushed into a corner. Uh, could be wrong on that, so we'll leave that up to the, uh, the leaders of that to discuss that. I thought it was kind of an interesting article here. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu actually writing his own article, Innovation Nation Economic Dyna, uh, Dyna, excuse me, uh, Dyma, I can't even say the word right, Dominism can help make friends as well as fortunes, argues uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. In this article here, he goes into how much uh, uh, influence that Israel has over world economies. He said the, fu the future belongs to those who innovate. Israel is seizing the future with 8.5 million people. It has more companies on the NASDAQ than almost any other uh, country outside of North America and ranks third in the World Economic Forum, ranking of the most innovative uh, economies. Now. We could read on about this. I'm not going to really get into that very much there. I just kind of thought it was interesting when he mentioned about 8.5 million people, speaking about Israelis in the country there. But you know what's interesting is that includes the Arabic citizens as well. And I think that that's kind of a plausible thing for the Prime Minister to refer to this uh, as Israelis there because he is including both the uh, native Jewish people as well as the Arabic citizens as well. And that's kind of a nice gesture to see there. About time we see some kind of nice things coming uh, this way here. Uh, Al Jazeera, I'm hoping the article will pop back up. Uh, what a U.S. Uh, uh, what is the U.S. planning as far as moving the embassy to Jerusalem? That seems to be back on the table once again. It uh, doesn't look like we're going to get the article to pull up there. I'll just post that for you guys inside of the comments there. You can see it yourself. It's kind of a new, renewed issue about moving the U.S. embassy in uh, back into Israel. Let me just real quick before we... I didn't mean to pop this up quite that quick, guys. I wanted to let you know this is a little bit of a graphic uh, picture right here. It's a woman that was left in horrific uh, head wound after racist, uh, according to the article, racist thugs attacked her in the street. Nikki Hurst, 32, was assaulted by three Asian men as she walked down in Lady Anne Road in Bately, West Yorkshire. Police described the attack, which began... Um, well, now it finally popped up like I wanted it to. She was 32 years old. This happened, of course, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, but it says that, uh, uh, that she was first verbally abused, then she was attacked, and she was beaten. She actually suffered the head wound there, as you can see in the picture here, when they threw her down to the concrete there. It lacerated her head pretty badly. She's really bad bruised up in her eyes as well there where they kicked her and beat her. Very, very serious situation. And you know, friends, the thing is, this type of stuff is happening all over Western Europe. That's including Great Britain. We're seeing it in Sweden. We're seeing it in Germany. We're seeing it in France uh, because of the migrant situation that they have. And I personally 
believe that had the nations enforced their laws from the very beginning and not given favoritism to refugees or migrants or whichever the case may be, that we wouldn't have as much of this problem. You, know, you might have a little bit more fuller prisons, but one thing's for sure, when uh, refugees that come into the country at the courtesy of the country in order to flee a war-torn area, when they realize that you're serious about your laws, then you, know, you can change some of the situation that's happening there. I'm Stephen Benoon. By the way, we are headed out today to uh, go back to the Czech Republic, and uh, my wife will be uh, we're attempting to try to undergo some more testing uh, in Europe we, where we are insured and to see if there is more evasive actions that need to be taken. That does not take her out of the danger, even if, uh, if it does go to the extent of having to have a surgical procedure done. And also I wanted to just mention real quick to our viewers there, many of you that uh, love us and, and have helped uh, with her medical expenses here in America because we do not have insurance here. Um, uh, and if we did, unfortunately, the aggressive treatment the doctors are doing right now is not covered because it's considered natural, uh, natural means, and that's not really covered under uh, insurance policies here. It is a, uh, a DMSO potentiation therapy with extremely high doses of vitamin C that she's on. And I want to just share this because a lot of people may not understand Yana's background. She is a nurse midwife, like a nurse practitioner here in America. Uh, specializing in gynecology in Europe. That's her background. She does no longer practices, uh, but she also did a very intense uh, study in naturopathic medicine. She's also a biologist, and, um, and Yana has uh, extensive training, was actually doing her doctorate degree in natu as a naturopathic physician. Uh, unfortunately, Obama did have that school closed, as many of them are always, they're always out to try to close these schools, so she was not able to complete that degree, but still has a very in-depth uh, understanding of this. And her situation is very serious, and unfortunately, some of the natural uh, remedies that people often suggest that are not expensive to do were far beyond that. Uh, so we do need a more aggressive approach here. And we were uh, said, spoken to earlier, uh, or actually just yesterday, that she would need six months when she returns of this type of therapy. So we're still looking at a very intense um, uh, economic hardship as we move forward with this. And so we do thank you for those of you that have helped. Uh, and if you've written us, uh, please forgive us. We are behind on this once again because of her being sick. Yana does a lot of the answering of letters that come in, whether it be email or via um, uh, address. And as well, we do have, we have set up a U.S. address here because we do have to come back for her to do the treatment that she'll have to continue here. Uh, so I'll be sharing that here at the end of the broadcast. You'll sh see it appear on the screen there. It's in Orlando. Uh, it is at an address that has actually got the name um, Champions Gate. Uh, we don't live there. We actually have an apartment on the other side of Orlando. Uh, that when we were staying like in a little uh, apartment there when we first came here temporarily, uh, that's like a golfing area or something. I don't like golf myself, but that's why the address is Champions Gate. But that'll appear on the screen if you would like to help continue to contribute to the work we do here at Israeli News Live, or if you would like to help with her um, uh, the medical expenses that we're going to incur for the next six months. We do greatly appreciate that. And just if you're going to do it that way, note it to us that that's what it's for. So that way we can separate from those that like to support the news broadcast, uh, uh, you know, the prophetic insights we share here from, you know, the, from her medical treatment there. We definitely appreciate that and we love you very much and thank you for the help that you're providing for us there. Uh, it means the world to us and I can't tell you in your prayers, those that uh, that are praying for her. Uh, we've seen so many of the letters and we thank you from the bottom of our heart because uh, I have to be quite frank about this. You know, what she's facing, the tumor that the doctors have diagnosed it as, uh, they cannot say it's cancer without removing it to have it checked. Uh, and even then, if it is malignant, it would only spread to her body through what they call spillage. There's no way to avoid it. That's why she has to have the treatment even if we're able to do that in Europe, uh, we still have to do the treatment regardless. And, uh, but uh, in the natural medicine, whether it be chemotherapy, things of those natures there, no one survives it. There's not been a, a recorded case that I am aware of that survives uh, what she's battling. 
uh, if it in fact is, as their suspicion is. So again, I don't want to label her uh, something that has not been labeled there as of yet, uh, but we do know that it is very serious and it causes her a tremendous amount of pain as well. Um, so, you know, therefore we know the only, and even she has three regular physicians that specialize, uh, specialists in this area here that all are of the consensus as well that the uh, DMSO potentiation therapy that she's doing is the only uh, chance for survival outside of the Lord intervening directly. And luckily, one thing that we're very happy about is one of her physicians is a believer in Yeshua as well, very passionate believer in Yeshua. So we thank God for that and thank God for him as well. Uh, but we just want to ask your continued uh, prayer for this matter here. Uh, and, and we thank you for your patience uh, in us being able to respond to you guys as well. As we travel back, I will probably be doing a few quick takes here as we're along the way, things that are going on there. But uh, it'll actually be probably the first part of the week before I actually get in there and begin to really pull a uh, good broadcast together again. Uh, so. Maybe actually this weekend I should be able to do that once again. Should be able to do that. So anyway, we love you. Thank you. And God bless you. And uh, you can also visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, if you uh, like to support this broadcast. And you can give there. Or you can even write here on YouTube, right? On our, as long as you're on Israeli News Live, there are those that have permission to promote, post our videos. And that's quite all right. Uh, but our donation link is on Israeli News Live on YouTube. You can do that right on the channel there. God bless you and Shalom.